If you've always wanted to have a go at gold work embroidery and the threads will seem a bit confusing or you just can't remember what they are, then this video is for you. In this video I'm going to run through the most common embroidery metals and threads available. I'll tell you how they are constructed, how you put them down and what you can use them for. We have lots of gold work videos available and I'll put a link in the description below to the playlist for the gold work videos and um, we also have a download on the website which tells you all about the gold threads and metals that we sell in the shop the sizes of them when to use them how many colors there are so do check that out that's a really useful resource and i'll put a link again for that and we have all of these metals and threads in the shop as well so there's a link at the end of the video to the shop so do pop along and have a look at those So you'd think that gold threads and metals were made of gold, um, which is sort of true, but some of the terms you might come across um, are gold 2%. So this is the thread with the most gold content in it, 2% of gold in it. Um, I would use this if you were restoring something or you were doing a commission or something a little bit special because that 2% of gold does add quite a bit to the price. Um, if you want a nice alternative that's still got some gold in it, you could use gilt threads and metals that's got 0.5% um, gold in it so it's still got a gold content but it's much more affordable um, and easy to get. You may also see silver and silver plated so silver has got a 90% silver content in it and the silver plated is a copper core with silver plating on top of it so again a slightly more inexpensive version if you don't want to use the silver um, and then the coloured metals and threads have usually a copper core or copper content and then some sort of colouring over the top which can vary. So those are the five sort of different metals and threads um, that you will find. So you can split the gold into two categories. So those that have a core thread in them, so gold work threads, they've got a thread through the middle and some kind of wrapping around them and into gold work metals. So those are just purely a metal only, no thread content at all in them. So we're going to split those into two and we're going to look at the threads first. So the first thread I'm going to look at is Japanese thread. Now, this is um, quite a common thread in gold work, used very um, extensively throughout gold work. This is how it comes in our shop, so it's in three sizes. 12 is the largest, 8 is the smallest. And then out of the packet it looks like this. So it's quite a supple thread and if I just unravel the end, you can see how it's constructed. So it has a core thread in the middle. Now this used to be silk back in the day but now it's a synthetic core in the middle and it's got a gold coloured paper around it. This would used to have had gold content in it but not anymore and it's got this sort of paper ribbon wrapped around it and what it does mean is if you untwist it you can see that that gold paper separates so it's quite important with Japanese thread to make sure that it's twisted up and it comes in different colours um, and on a reel. So there's quite a lot of choices about how you can buy your Japanese thread and lots of different sizes as well, but they're all constructed in the same way um, and they're put down in the same way. Now, as far as putting the Japanese thread down, you lie it on the surface of the fabric and you stitch over it. So you're couching it, that's called, to the surface of the fabric. And because there's a core thread in the middle and a wrapping around it, that will need to be finished off. Now, that's the same for all of the threads they will all need the end taking through to the back and the end tying off or they'll all come unraveled so that's called plunging and then you tie it on the back and you usually couch these down in pairs so that you can see more of the colour and more of the gold and less of the thread and you usually use a matching thread so that you can again see the gold and not the thread. So the next thread we're going to talk about is passing or passing depending on how you want to say it this is it here, it's called passing, passing number six. And this is similar to the Japanese, but it's got a slightly different wrapping around it. So it's a little bit more wiry now and a bit less supple than the Japanese. You can sort of bend it to shape a little bit because this has actually got metal content in it. And then if I un 
unravel the end of this. Hope you can see that. So there's the core thread, but this doesn't have a paper. This has a very, very fine metal um, wire, flattened wire, actually. It's like a very, very small ribbon, um, very fine metal wire wrapped around it, which is what gives it the more wiry effect. So it's a bit finer than the Japanese thread, and it also doesn't come unraveled so easily. If you can't untwist this, then you still can't see the thread in the middle. So a little bit more stable than the Japanese, but a bit finer and a bit more wiry. Um, but you put it down in the same way, you couch over the top of it and you plunge your ends through to the back. I just want to talk to you about 371 thread now because it's very similar to the passing thread. But this comes in lots of colours, really pretty colours. Um, and it's the same made in the same way. So it's got this core thread again. Um, but now because they're colours, they don't have a wire around it. It has a sort of modern, um, often some sort of plastic coating around it instead of a metal. So these ones, um, although made the same way, it's sort of still a flat ribbon. They're not wiry like the passing is because there's no metal content so they act very much like the passing they look like the passing but not quite as wiry as the passing but they do look really nice together with the passing so let's look at another of the couching threads so this is a twist this is a number one and a half we've got two sizes a number one as well which is slightly finer and I'm just going to show you a couple here. So here's our gilt twist and here's our copper one. So I'll show you with the copper. Now this is made up of three, hence the name twist. I can untwist them. So three separate threads and each one of these threads is like a passing thread. So it's a core thread with a very fine wire wrapped around it. Um, super fine, this one. Know if I can get one apart, but I'll try. Yep, there I can. So it's got a black core thread for the copper um, with a very fine copper wire around it, and then three of those are twisted together, and you get a twist. Um, really nice textural thread to use, goes really nicely with the Japanese and the passing. You can couch them down together. Remember, this is put down in the same way. So stitch over the top of it, take the ends through to the back, and finish them off. So just a nice way of adding a little bit of extra texture to your embroidery. Also comes in different colours, it's just a couple of the colours that we have here so you can start to mix textures and colours with this um, thread. So the last of the most common thread I want to talk about is Rococo. So here it is in the packet, um, three sizes, a large, a medium and a fine. Um, got a couple here. I've got a silver and a gilt Rococo. And I think I'll take this one apart because this is bigger. Now this has a really beautiful wave to it. You may also hear the term check thread, which is made in a very similar way, but it's um, more of an abrupt wave in it. So it's got sort of more peaks in it, more triangular peaks, where this is a much gentler wave to it but very similar threads but there is a difference in them and that's what the difference is and then if i unravel this one so this has got the thin covering over the top this is a metal flattened metal wire again but you'll see now if i unravel enough of it you can see that something special is happening with the core thread of this and this is actually spun um like this quite cleverly and I wouldn't like to pretend that I know how to explain that um, but involves in drawing it one way and drawing it the other and you get this twist in it and then this gold is wrapped around it and this is what gives it this nice texture. So this is really nice if you want um, a bit more of a textured edge to something or you want to break up the straight lines in the middle of something, put some of this down the middle and you get this beautiful wave down the middle. So really nice for edgings and some extra detail and again you could put down with all the other core thread so you can mix all of these up put these down together and create some really beautiful textures 
Right, now let's have a look at the different metals that are available. And I'm going to start with pearls. So that's P-U-R-L-S, pearls. And a pearl is a coil of wire. So it's a wire coiled around a needle. Um, and we've got some different types of pearls. So I'm going to start with rough pearl. And this is what it looks like. Now, there's no core thread in this, no thread at all. So this is just wire. And this is a round wire wrapped around a round needle. And again, I'll just pull it apart so you can hopefully see that. It's just a coil of, coil of wire and you can stretch it till it's almost straight. Um, when you're using it, you don't want to stretch it. Um, so it is quite delicate to use. So you can see how I'm sort of not really touching it too much, quite a delicate um, wire to use. Now, because it's called a rough pearl, um, the wire is a round cross section, so it's not shiny. It's quite a dull kind of effect. And if I just leave that there and show you the smooth pearl. So made in the same way, then you can hopefully see camera how shiny this one is compared to the rough one. So made in the same way, coil of wire wrapped around a round needle, but this wire has been bruised first, so it's been kind of burnished and that's what gives it its shine. So um, again, if I, it's very delicate, if I pull it apart, it will just stretch, it doesn't go back again. So worth remembering that. Um, so made in the same way, but one is slightly polished, so it has a shine, so the smooth pearl is shiny and the rough pearl is um, more dull than that, so it doesn't have a shine to it. So the way that you use this is um, because it's been coiled around a, um, a needle, it's hollow in the middle. So what you would do with this is you cut it into small lengths, so you can either do um, very small lengths so they look like little beads and you can thread them on like a bead or you can do a longer length thread it onto your needle and that's what we call cut work which you can use to fill in shapes or you can add some decoration um, you can make patterns with it as well so this is cut up threaded onto the needle and stitched on the surface of the fabric this doesn't go through to the back of the fabric at all there's no thread to finish off that's going to come undone so all of the metals now sit on top of the surface of the fabric also comes in lots of pretty colours. Um, so here's a smooth and a rough just to show you in our golden green range. And this is the rough. Just move that around a little bit. And this is the smooth and you can see how much more shiny the smooth is. So made in the same way, just slightly bruised wire gives the wire more of a shine. So two more kinds of pearl for you are wire check and bright check pearl, both pearls, P-U-R-L-S, um, wire check and bright check, come like that. Now the wire check just comes in the one size and the bright check's two, so number six is a larger size, number eight is a smaller size. And I'll show you these together because these are also made in the same way as the smooth and the rough pearl, but around a different shaped needle, so they have a triangular shaped needle, triangular cross section, so that it um, bends around the needle and creates these facets and it's the facets that shine and make them sparkle. So this is the bright check, you can see that sparkling there. So this wire again has been bruised to give it the shine, it's been burnished so it's a shiny one and the wire check is non-burnished so that starts with a round wire around a triangular needle, um, so that one is non-shiny. So often used together to create nice effects. You can see if I just put them together, how, not, how beautiful they look together. So to create texture and different effects, you can mix your wire check with your bright check. Um, you can also mix this with the smooths as well. So you've got lots of options and with your different sizes as well to put these together in cut work or mix them in chips as well, which is the little short square pieces. So that's a wire and a bright, and again, it comes in lots of yummy colours. This is our turquoise one, um, more noticeable in this one now, so you can see how sparkly and shiny the bright check is, and a bit more subdued for the wire check, but they work really beautifully together. You 
come to help me again? Do you know anything about gold wires? No, not really, he said. <laughs> right, if you don't mind, buddy. We've got some work to do. Ooh. Oh, I know. Well, we're nearly finished. Right, um, I want to talk to you now about a slightly different um, wire. So it's still a pearl, P-U-R-L, um, and it's called pearl, pearl. So that's pearl as in thing that comes out of an oyster, P-E-A-R-L, pearl, P-U-R-L. So it's still a wire wrapped around a needle. I'll show you what it looks like out the bag. So this is our gilt one, our silver plated one and our copper pearl pearl. Um, but what's different about this is you can see how wiry this is. It's sort of much stiffer, made with a much bigger wire. I'll pull the copper one out. And the difference in this is the profile of the wire. And it's actually been drawn. You won't be able to see it from this, but you can see how stiff that is now. Not anywhere near as delicate as the other pearls. And the profile is like a horseshoe shape. So it's got a dome on the top. Um, and a flatter piece underneath. So when you wrap it around the needle, it gives you these, to stretch it a little bit, gives you these sort of pearl type shapes, I suppose, but it gives it a texture um, if you look closely. So um, much more wiry this one. So this one is really good for outlines, really good for containing the chips. So if we're going to cut the bright check or the smooth pearl up into chips, um, this is really nice around the edge of it. it, gives a nice smooth finish to it. So those are pearl pearls. And then we have something very similar called a metal pearl. These come in lots of lots of lovely colours. It's a green one and I'll just show you this red one here. Um, so Pull that end. So it's slightly different cross section of wire to this one. So you can see this has got more of a wave in it and the red one's a little bit more of a zigzag in it. So this is more of a flattened wire. This has not been drawn into a horseshoe shape. So it has a flatter appearance to it. And this one has got these more textured sort of pearl shapes in it. So a subtle difference between the two, but that is the difference between them. So it's the cross section of the wire that makes it a pearl pearl rather than a normal metal pearl. So great for outlines. And again, this all sits on the top of the fabric. Now um, you don't take any of this through to the back, so you need to cut them to the right length. These are quite thick metals now. You can see how bendy they are. Um, don't use your best pair of embroidery scissors for this. Have a pair just to cut these metals because they will blunt the scissors. So keep one just for that. So one of the more unusual metals now, but you still might come across, and this is called broad plate. And this is what it looks like. It's quite springy. So we've got a gilt, a silver plated and a copper. And it is literally a plate, it's like a ribbon of metal. Um, very complex process to make this. So it is one of the more expensive metals that you will find. Um, involves very high grade rollers to flatten the, the wire out into a, a metal sheet, basically. So it looks like a ribbon. It is quite stiff. If I bend it, it will stay where I've put it. So um, equally, you don't want to bend it when you don't want to bend because it will come out. You can sort of pull it out, but it does still mark. So quite a difficult wire to use um, but basically you couch over it so you stitch over it and you bend it back and forth on itself um, and you can fill areas in with it you can always couch along it as well and do some outlines but generally it's for filling in different shapes so this is a broad plate so this is quite wide and then we also have plate ribbon which is finer. So this is, the ball plate's two millimetres, the plate ribbon is one millimetre. So lots of lovely colours with this, but much finer. Um, so therefore more delicate, um, but you put it down in the same way. So you bend it back and forth um, and you can get quite creative with these as well. 
So worth knowing about these two, although they're slightly more unusual metals that you'll find. So that's broad plate and plate ribbon. Um, one of my favourites now, um, no piece of gold work is finished without some spangles on it, in my opinion. So these are spangles. Two, three, four and five millimetres in the gilt and two, three and four in the silver plated. Um, can't get them in anything else or in any colours at all. So it is only gilt and silver plated for these. And I'll just tip some out so you can see what they are. Now they look at first glance like sequins and they're kind of the gold work version of sequins. Now these are the 5mm ones because I want you to be able to see them. So if I just separate them, I love how these are made. So they're all made individually. So sequins are stamped out of a sheet of plastic or metal, but these are all formed individually. And it's a length of wire bent into a horseshoe shape and stamped flat. So each one is done separately. So they are um, a bit more of the expensive ones, but they're absolutely beautiful shine on them. And you can hopefully just see where that horseshoe shape meets. So there's actually kind of a little gap in it and that's how the hole is formed in the middle. So they do vary a little bit because of that, but they are beautifully shiny um, and add really lovely sparkle to your work. So definitely, definitely worth knowing about spangles. So just one more thing to tell you about before I go, because it's not a thread or a metal, but it does appear a lot in gold work. So I think it's worth knowing about, and that's leather. A couple of pieces here. So I've got a faux leather, fake leather, and an actual leather. Um, and this is a leather skin, which is covered in um, metallized process, metal foil. Um, and you can cut shapes out of it and you can stitch down the shape onto your gold work piece. So you will see quite a lot of leather in gold work. Um, it's nice used in slightly smaller quantities. It can be, as you can see how shiny that is, it can be a little bit um, blingy. Um, so I think use it in moderation, but can add really nice textures. You can pad underneath as well to raise it up and add a little bit of dimension to your work. So worth knowing about the leathers as well um, and that you can get those two alternatives. And it also comes in lots of colours. So there's metal colours, we've got silver in there and there's some gold pearl as well in there and also in some really lovely colours as well. So red, pink, purple, blue and green in there. So lots of choices for your leathers um, and a great way to add just a little bit of extra dimension to your gold work. So I hope this video helps demystify um, all the different threads and metals. They can be confusing and they're not always um, obviously named as to why it's called what it is. Um, don't forget the download sheet from the website as well. Uh, the link's in description below and check out all our other videos and our shop over here.